We're still in California, because we're culture warriors, I guess. Welcome to the show, everybody. What's going on, guys? Hey. Who hey. are you? What are you doing? Hey, good morning. James Lawrence with Envisage Law. I'm a partner there. I'm an attorney. Yeah, I'm Bill Ottman, founder of Minds.com. And yeah, we're, uh, we're suing California over a censorship law. So Bill Ottman, you guys probably know, many of you may know because he's the founder of Minds.com, which is a, a very large social media platform that we use and a lot of people have used. And it's got a cryptocurrency involved, but also you've been on the show a bunch talking about censorship and other stuff like that. And then uh, this, uh, this lawyer fellow over here, very successful in fighting against unjust censorship. You want to give a quick context as to your past victories? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I had the opportunity to represent Alex Berenson in his path-breaking case against Twitter. It's the first case that I'm aware of where a de-platform user of any social media platform successfully sued a, a platform and got reinstated. And that happened in July of last year. So uh, I, I do a number of other things. Currently, I, I also represent Jamie Rogozinski in his lawsuit against, uh, who's the founder of Wall Street Bets, in his lawsuit against Reddit for his deplatforming from that uh, website as well. Yeah, how come these tech companies are such I'll try to avoid swearing, but why are they such bad people, you know? I mean, the ideology has seeped into the terms of service. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like a, a lot of it may be ideological, like maybe with Twitter and Twitter's past leadership, but a lot of it seems to be just parasitic leeching. You know, like these companies just want to make money, don't care, plow through whatever gets in their way. You know what I mean? It seems like they're alienating a huge percentage of the population, and it, it would arguably be bad for business in certain sense. I mean, you, you are constantly talking about get woke, go broke. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, but I, I wonder if they're looking at it like we'll lose X dollars if we do this. We'll lose X plus Y dollars if we don't. So we may as well just accept the loss and then just plow mm -hmm. through or something. But anyway, let's talk about what's going on. So I guess the, the big news, especially for this show we're doing, is that um, California has a law, which is, I'm gonna avoid swearing for now, cause like YouTube's got rules where it's like, don't swear in the first minute or something. So <laughs> we'll keep the swearing to a minimum for the time being. But uh, it, it's, it's BS. It, it's basically gonna, it, it, it basically is literally putting pressure on these companies to effectively censor, create uh, unjust policies. It, I think it outright violates the first amendment. So that's the, 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 the news. We, the mic, yeah. We're, 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 we're suing California, okay, to fight censorship. Let's start with this, and then we'll get into the bigger picture with all the tech stuff. So what's this law, and uh, why are we suing? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just give the audience a, a, an overview. So this statute, AB 587, was passed by the California legislature, and it really does two things. One, it imposes a requirement on covered platforms which would include at the very least Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, among others, but it imposes a requirement on those platforms to have terms of service that require content moderation at some level. Okay, that's, that's point one. Point two is the law requires these platforms to submit periodic reports to the California Attorney General's office regarding actions that the platforms have taken to police several categories of content, including, among others, hate speech and racism, misinformation and disinformation, and extremism and radicaliz radicalization. Those are terms in the statute that are undefined and aren't anchored to any kind of basis for the regulated parties to understand what their obligations are under the statute, which is highly problematic. But to your point, Tim, the statute also has the effect of incentivizing these platforms to engage in censorship across these various categories, because as Governor Newsom announced in his signing statement with respect to the law, the aim of it is to prevent 
or, or to have the state of California say, hey, it doesn't have a home here. Uh, and, and, and that has troubling troubling speech implications it's and an, those it's are an, problems. It's an overt and very obvious First Amendment violation. It's, it's yes, and, 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 and again, the end game, if you wanna kind of look more broadly is there are going to be certain platforms that are going to submit reporting to the Attorney General of California that are gonna be good corporate citizens. They're gonna be taking action across these various categories, perhaps in sufficient uh, number and quantity and, and timing. And then there are gonna be other platforms perhaps that are lagging. And the, the end game there is to what we've already seen, right? With respect to the reforms that Elon Musk has tried to make on Twitter, an attempt to paint those that aren't taking an aggressive approach, approach to these issues as pariahs and as problems and as hotbeds of fill in the blank, hatred, so, misinformation, and when, so on. When, when did this law uh, pass? It was passed last year and its provisions went into effect on January 1st of this year and the reporting requirement will kick in in January 1st of 2024. But of course, the regulated entities are gonna have to start taking steps now. Yeah, spending money. To, I, to, to, to comply. And again, we're not against moderation. Like right. we're open, to, you know, we try to have a First Amendment aligned content policy and the reality is that disinformation, misinformation, hate, extremism i mean extremism about what you you could be an extreme skater you could be like you can't put the word extremism just right. with no definition in a law and I so mean, one way to go about it is just to only ever report antifa and be like here's what we've done here's the far left here's <laughs> what they're doing and they're going to be like oh well what about these other groups what other groups <laughs> and be like oh you know we don't consider that to be extremism you know like the because they're, they're going to try they, they try and claim that like libertarians are far right or whatever right you know no, that's not extremism. We, we, I mean, if you can define it yourself. But I think the obvious thing is that when the government intervenes and tells a private business to regulate speech or create pressures that will result in any kind of speech regulation, that is just like plainly, and I, I don't understand how they thought this would fly in the first place. I kind of feel like this is a rubber stamp lawsuit. I mean, like they'll try and fight it. Of course, it's California. They may get a favorable judge. But I mean, it, it, when can the government be like, we hereby impose speech regulations on corporations? That's just a violation of the First Amendment, plainly and obviously. Well, well to your point, I mean, a, a, a court in New York, a federal district court in New York enjoined New York's law, which is similar in some ways, which required reporting regarding uh, platforms and, and defined platforms very, very broadly in that, in that case, who um, uh, for needing to take action against hateful conduct, which they defined as, among other things, inciting violence against protected categories of people. And of course, we've seen how um, that rhetoric has been used in the context of stochastic terrorism, which is a concept that carried to its logical conclusion would mean the end of free speech in America and also the end of freedom of the press. And yeah. at least they defined hate in the New, in the New York law. They're not even <laughs> defining any of these words at all in, in the California, which is is honestly lazy of them to have not done that. But yeah, you're you're right. There's there aren't any definitions of these these arguably very ambiguous terms. But nothing is ambiguous about the potential consequences of violating the statute, which are fines that could amount up to fifteen thousand dollars a day if. The, the platforms that are at issue do not comply and do not bend the knee to the, the censorship regime. The reporting is extreme too. Like they want number, you know, clear analytics of all the reports of hate, misinformation, dis like, like these are extensive data sets that are required, you know, multiple times a year. That's right. So, yeah. so it's a major cost on the business yes. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just take, take the speech issue out of it. It's a, it's a burdensome, regulation on private businesses who are now going to have to hire employees and, uh, and, and, and get staff together to, to Bill's point to create reporting on ambiguous terms even if they could do the work. And it would be one thing if this law was just saying listen you have to have terms of service and you have to you know report it once in a while but they chose to pick these six words 
or how that hap- like it's they're arbitrary. I mean, they're, well, they're very specifically chosen words, but they don't. Why, why don't they choose other words? Why don't they choose um, drug drugs? Well, illegal dr- like there's so many other categories of content that they could right, have. Because it's political. It's political. Yeah. You know-